There's been another leak of DMZ information, and this time it's all about Season 3. For the last several weeks, I've been wondering what the devs are going to do in DMZ Season 3 when it comes to new features, because it's already been confirmed that we won't be getting a faction mission refresh this time. And that's where this leak comes in. We've got quite a bit to discuss today, as the future of DMZ is looking quite different and I think a lot brighter. So go and drop this video a like if you're excited for Season 3 and what it's going to bring. And make sure if you haven't already, go and click that subscribe button and become part of the channel over here. We're so close to 900,000 subscribers now. And of course, there will be full coverage of Season 3 here on the channel when it drops in less than three weeks time. Okay, first of all, let's tackle one of the bigger elements that could be coming to Season 3, a brand new scavenger NPC. Voice lines for this character have been leaked and suggest that some element of trading is going to be happening in-game very soon, as opposed to in the menus, which is something we've spoken about before. Voice lines such as, let's see what you've got for me. That trash ain't worth my time. Now this is worth a trade, and nice find lead into all of that. For a while now, lots of players have been asking for a trading or market system, some kind of economy to be added to DMZ to give it more meaning so that the cash and the items that are present in the world are worth extracting. But based on these leaked voice lines, it seems that instead of it being a menu-based system, it's actually going to take place in a round instead, which is a pretty interesting take. Somewhere on the map, there's likely going to be this scavenger character that you can walk up to, accept some kind of trade mission, you go off and find those items, you deliver them back to the character, and then you get something in return. Whether this is actually going to take the place of some kind of menu for trading outside of matches, that remains to be seen. But there is obviously the concern that right now in DMZ, we have buy stations already that you can use to purchase items. So what does this scavenger character really do apart from mimic what the buy stations already do? How does it fit into the equation? What's their purpose? Could we not just go up to a buy station instead and get what we want with cash? Well, there's more to this leak, and hopefully we can answer some of those questions now. Alongside this scavenger NPC edition, it sounds as if the way you obtain items in DMZ from buy stations is going to completely change in Season 3. The devs are adding a faction, reputation and trust system, giving you a brand new progression path to work on, as well as laying the groundwork for these other new features. We're also getting barter contracts, which will allow you to gain reputation with each faction. There will be faction-specific buy stations, which will contain specific items that depend on your reputation with that faction. And then there will be faction sites, physical locations on the maps in DMZ with faction-specific AI protecting them. These AI will be friendly or hostile based on your reputation and actions with the specific faction. Now, I know that's a lot to take in, but let's break it down a little bit. We'll start off with the faction reputation and trust system. This new system is going to massively increase the progression possibilities in DMZ. Right now, there's not much to work towards or take rewards from outside of the faction missions and you earning your insured weapon slots. Those are features that we've had since day one of DMZ, and many players are now looking for more to do in the mode. And in the absence of that, during Season 2 and Season 2 Reloaded, we didn't really get any meaningful updates there. PvP in DMZ has taken a massive uptick. Players just seemingly playing the mode only to go after other players. Which, let's be honest, is hardly their fault. There's not that much more to do. This reputation system for the faction, so probably White Lotus, Legion and Black Mouse, is likely going to change the dynamic of how you play DMZ, as it sounds like gaining reputation and trust from one faction is going to negatively affect, or at least increase the gap between, your reputation you have with another faction. So it's something to think about as you're playing. The way you're going to be gaining reputation with the factions is through barter contracts. These appear to be separate from the scavenger NPC that we spoke about earlier, and they tie into the new faction-specific buy stations. The better your reputation, say with the White Lotus faction, the more valuable the items you're going to be able to buy from their buy stations. Now this is a big departure from how buy stations currently work in DMZ, and it appears to be an attempt from the developers to have greater meaning to the factions, and to sort of elevate the narrative in DMZ, and how those factions are like working with or against each other, and establish a more complex economy in the game. Right now, you simply obtain cash or valuable items, you go over to a buy station, 
and you just buy what you need. It's really simple. With this new reputation system feeding into faction-specific buy stations, the developers are creating a more complex gameplay loop where, yes, you might have plenty of cash on your character, but if you don't have good reputation with, say, the Legion faction, you can't just go and use their buy stations to get items you might want or need. You need the good rep to get those items. You're going to have to traverse the progression path, build up your reputation, and get on their good side. And then, beyond that, we have the faction sites, which sound like safe havens for players with good reputation with a specific faction. These sites have AI at them that will either act friendly towards you when you approach if you have good rep with the faction, or they will act with hostility if you attack them and you don't have good rep with them. And to me, it also sounds like these faction sites will be where the faction buy stations are located. It kind of makes sense, right? You need good rep to go up to the faction site, then there's the buy station in there for you to get what you want. Now, one type of player that I can see really benefiting from all of this new stuff is the solo player. Right now, across Almazra, Ashika Island, and Building 21, playing solo can be pretty rough. There's very little protection afforded to people who choose to run without teammates. But with this new leak of information, I can see solo players benefiting massively. Working to increase your reputation with the different factions is going to allow you access to their faction sites, which come with the AI that defends you rather than attacks you. We haven't seen this in DMZ yet. The AI has always been a hostile force, whether that's the Al-Qatala operatives on al Mazra or the Shadow Company mercenaries in Building 21 on Ashika Island and around the crash site on al Mazra. Working to build up your rep with White Lotus, Legion, and Black Mouse, these other factions that are working in and around the world of DMZ, that could give solo players a real chance to build a brand new playstyle, incorporating AI that will defend you rather than simply attacking you as an enemy team closes in with you running a hunt contract. Then there's, of course, the scavenger NPC boss guy, with them being an in-game character that is said to be someone that you can trade items with and rewards you with items in return and faction reputation. That adds another progression layer, but not just solo players, but all players jumping into a match. If you're someone who's close to finishing their faction missions, you are obviously looking for more to do in DMZ. Well, it sounds like in the near future, you'll be able to take on unique objectives each match from this scavenger NPC that will further your rep with different factions. And that's going to lessen the emphasis on PvP, which, as I mentioned earlier, has had a massive increase in popularity recently. PvP is always going to be part of this mode. There are other hostile players on the same map as you. But of course, there's missions to do and things to complete. And right now, I feel the balance between PvE and PvP is heavily skewed towards just going after other players. And then, on top of that, there's the possibility that the reputation you earn with one faction will hurt your reputation with another, leading to this back-and-forth mechanic. Perhaps there's a faction buy station that will only sell items that you need to complete a specific mission, but you have to be a certain reputation level to go and buy them. That's going to create a lot of choices for you as a player, and it could lead to a lot more depth and meaning being added to DMZ moving forward. If you ask me, this is exactly the kind of feature injection that DMZ needs and has needed for some time. Unfortunately, the addition of the new Ashika Island map hasn't really moved the game mode forwards all that much. Without additional features surrounding that new map that help you progress in the game mode and reward you for your time playing, a map alone really isn't going to do that much. And as we've seen during Season 2, it hasn't really done much to benefit DMZ. If even half of this new leaked information turns out to be true, I can see Season 3 of DMZ being a massive step forward for players who want that added depth and meaning. And as an extraction shooter in this sort of emerging extraction shooter space, DMZ adding more features as it goes with a live player base, that puts it in a really positive position. It's already got people playing it in the position it's in. If you add more features that keep people playing and keep people engaged and push forward their progression and give them more rewards, that's just going to incentivize them to keep playing and keep the game mode healthy. So, as I say, if even half of this becomes true, then that's going to be great for the future of DMZ. If you are looking for something else DMZ related to watch, however, check out my latest video with Stod, where we take on a team camping the Xfil Chopper looking to take out innocent players. And let's just say it didn't end well for them.